perspective. And the, the two major conclusions of quantum mechanics are that uh, the shorter the life of a particle, the more, the more money it costs to produce it. And so you can always get more money from the government to, to find more particles. So there's always new ones being found. These very short-lived uh, particles are the basic building blocks of nature, but they can only be produced in the laboratory at great expense. So the basic building blocks of matter don't exist in nature. What does quantum mechanics say about reality? Well, quantum mechanics is just like religion. You got different sects. You don't have any uh, uniformity. The largest sect uh, that's sex, not sex. I'm not talking about copulation. The largest sect is the Copenhagen School, which says that quantum mechanics can't say anything about reality. The largest school of thought among physicists is the Copenhagen School, and they say we can't talk about reality. And this is stated quite bluntly by uh, many physicists of that school. Physics does not talk about reality. It talks about what kind of equations are useful for us at this time. Questions about reality belong in somebody else's department. There are some physicists who don't like that. They say, why should we spend our whole life studying this subject if we can't say anything about reality at the end of all our study? So this minority has rejected the Copenhagen view and then started disagreeing with one another entirely about everything else. Among those who reject the Copenhagen view, there is the multiple universe people. Uh, this was started by John Archibald Wheeler and two uh, graduate students named Everett and Graham at Princeton back in the 1950s. It's called the EWG model for Everett, Wheeler and Graham. That's the order in which they put their names on the paper in which they proposed it. And according to this model, everything that can happen to a quantum system does happen to it. This is one way of understanding the mysterious indeterminacy of quantum uh, processes. So therefore, everything that could happen uh, to any uh, quantum thingamajig, and you can't, you can't say a quantum particle uh, when you're among physicists because uh, they have two models for what's going on inside the atom, the particle model and the wave model. They use the particle model on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and the wave model on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, and on Sundays, they're agnostics like me. But the thingamajigs, whatever they are, the, the thingamajigs that act like waves in some experiments and act like particles in other experiments, everything that can happen to them does happen to them. And since we're made up of these thingamajigs, that means that everything that can happen to us does happen to us. And the EWG model proposes this literally. This is not science fiction. This is a legitimate theory in modern physics. You thought it just happened on Star Trek, I suppose. Everything that can happen to a quantum system does happen to us, so therefore that everything can, that can happen to the universe does happen to it. So therefore there are 10 to the 100th power universes uh, approximately at this point, with new ones that are coming into existence every nanosecond with every new alternative. Every time you have a quantum alternative, both of them happen. So in the universe next door, I'm not here tonight because uh, I was in a car accident on my way here. Isn't that terrible? That's sad to think about. Uh, then there's another universe uh, over there where I'm not here tonight because I never came to the United States on this lecture tour. I decided to stay in Ireland. And then there are other universes where I don't exist at all because my father never met my mother. There, I suppose there are universes where I was aborted. And uh, every one of these is equally real. Uh, which is very much like the uh, Mahayana Buddhist saying, uh, existence and non-existence are the same. Uh, I exist, but I also don't exist. Uh, the, uh, one of the illustrations of this is the Schrodinger's cat paradox, about which I once wrote a novel, which a few people read. I, uh, anyway, the Schrodinger's cat paradox, which that novel is based on, is if you put a cat in a box, with a poison gas pellet that will be destroyed by a quantum decay process and at some time or other, you don't know what time. If you calculate by the equations of quantum mechanics for a given time, is the cat dead or alive at that time, you always get a minimum of two answers. So in one universe the cat is dead and in the next universe the cat is alive, just like me.